Good afternoon to my fellow engineers. Um, in this video we're just going to have a very quick look at uh, surfaces. And this is going to be the fifth and final video in the intermediate pack um, here for Solid Edge. Um, uh, and we're going to do a very very quick overview on what surfaces are uh, in this video. And in the next video, which will be the first video of the advanced pack, we're going to look at some more advanced surfaces um, and what we can do with them and how we can really use them. So. Um, I explained a couple of videos ago when I when I suggested that we're going to be looking at surfaces, what a surface was, and I said that basically, if you imagine a sheet of paper, um, you know, something that's uh, imaginably infinitesimally thin, um, a surface is like that sheet of paper. So we can fold it or we can like um, ripple it in certain ways, but the point of it is it's still infinitesimally thin. Um, it's kind of like a two D shape in a three D environment, but obviously it's got um, uh, waves or whatever uh, into it. And the reason that we can make stuff like that is because when you're making um, an aeroplane wing, for example, it's not um, a constant shape all the way around. You can't really make it through a cutter or a cut revolve. Um, and it's, it's certainly not a flat plane for an aeroplane wing. Um, same with helicopter blades. Same, you know, anything with airflow. It's not that. But also, if you wanted to make something like a hand whisk or a hand blender or anything with ergonomics involved, um, your hand doesn't wrap around like a solid bar as easily as it does around something that's got, you know, like a little bit of room for the thumb to go into or something like that. Um, just think of like a sports bottle it's obviously got an ergonomic shape to it as well. So we can use surfaces to make some really complex shapes, um, some really uh, smooth and uh, defined shapes, things that you couldn't make in extrude or cut environments. So we're going to dive in and we're going to explain what uh, what's, uh, uh, these surfaces um, can, can, can look like. So if I just um, if I just go on surfaces, the one that we're going to be looking at today, um, we're going to be looking at uh, three types of surfaces. We're going to be looking at blue surf, which is quite nice. We're going to be looking at bound surfing, which is very simple. Um, we're going to be looking at sweeping. Um, you may remember from the very first video of the intermediate pack, we looked at solid sweeping. Um, which was basically like extruding um, an area along a certain path. Um, so surf sweeping is very similar, it's just the 2D equivalent. And there are advantages to doing that if you wanted to make, um, for example, a tube, you'd use the sweep instead. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making this uh, tube sweep instead. Okay, so the way that all the surf, uh, all, 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 all these surfaces work, um, is through sketches. So you don't do it like extruding, you don't say I've got this plane and I want to make this. You say, right, I'm going to draw this sketch and I want this to behave in this way. So we're going to we're going to jump in and we're going to select our sketch command and we're going to, as always, select a plane to work on. So we're going to select the uh, ZX plane today. And I'm going to be completely arbitrary with my design of my curve, my, uh, my surface, just to show you what the sort of things it can do. So if you if you remember a couple of videos ago, um, I'm sure I've shown you this curve command. Um, I think I showed you in the uh, sweeping uh, in the sweeping video of the first intermediate pack. Um, so we're just going to select this and we're just going to draw a nice funky curve, uh, something along the lines of that. Will do. So we've got this shape, um, which will be very difficult to model uh, as an extrusion, and you can just close that sketch. And now to add. Um, uh, now, now to, we're going to say we want it to go by a certain length of distance. So, uh, you know, we want it to follow a certain shape. So we're going to uh, have to go into the ZY plane and say, right, follow this sort of shape here. So for this, uh, I'll just do a little bit simpler of a curve like that. And so that you can, so that we can set up some of the stuff later on. I'm also going to set, um, I'm kind of going to square this off, I'm going to have um, a, a sketch that's leading from this point and I'm going to have a, a sketch meeting those two points up. You'll see what I mean in just a sec. So, instead of, because there aren't planes currently along here and along here, we've got to create those planes, so instead of being coincident plane, we're going to use parallel plane. So we're on parallel plane, and we're going to say, we're going to, we're going to use this ZX plane as reference, and slide all the way along to our um, until the end here 
Um, and we can treat it exactly as if we were on the ZX plane, it's just obviously we're um, a couple of millimetres off based on the length of that sketch. And we're going to do our own new sketch here. So, starting at that point, we'll go something like that. Should do quite nicely. So you know that's connected, it might not be connected, but we'll have a look at that. Just that bridge when we come to it. And we're going to draw our fourth and final sketch just along this plane here. Uh, in fact, we'll just make it a straight line, it makes it nice and simple to work with. So we've now got a, a shape that's you know, impossible to design, or we, we, we've set up the grounds for a shape that's going to be impossible to design in an extrusion or cutting environment. The only way we can make it is in this surface environment. So the way we're going to do that, we're first going to look at the blue surf. So the way the blue surf works is we've just got, um, we want to meet that shape with that shape. We want them to connect in some way, and Solid Edge will just basically say, this is the way that I think it should connect. So we'll select our first plane, and we'll select our second step. And it makes this nice shape, and you, you can see what it's done there, obviously. I mean, it's, it's said, right, it's that shape, and how is it going to slowly and steadily kind of transform into this shape here? And that's exactly what it's done, and that, by definition, is what the blue surf does. Um, and quite simply, it just says, right, I've got this in initial sketch, which was um, the first sketch we drew. Um, how do I make it look like the one at the end? Um, I'm going to make this steady change. And this is really useful if you were doing something like a propeller or a wing. And this is exactly how you would go about designing uh, something like a wing. Obviously, you'd have to use some uh, computational fluid dynamics to get the exact shape right, but that's basically how you'd set it up. Okay, so we can just delete this blue surf. We know how, how that works now. The next one we're going to be looking at is the uh, bound surf. So we can just connect the uh, four lines, and the way a bound works is it just says, right, these are my four shapes, I'm just going to bind them together, and it, as you can see it's made the pretty much the same shape, not exactly the same shape, because this time it's accounted for that circle, for, or for that radius here sort of thing, um, but that's how the bound works, so it, makes, it works in the same way, I, I've got these four edges, how am I going to connect them in such a way that it looks like it's a constant flow, and you see what I mean about that piece of paper? You know, this could easily be a piece of paper that's been like slowly folded, or lightly folded on a desk. Um, so that that can easily be something. And uh, a surf, all all of these surfaces become purple when they've been made, um, and they're blue when they're active, and then they're purple when they're made. Okay. Um, so um, we'll we'll look at the sweep in just a bit. We'll look at the sweep towards the end. Um, the next thing you might want to know is, well, I've got this shape, that's very useful, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't exist at the minute, it doesn't really do anything useful. How can I make it do something useful? You know, I want this exact shape, but I want it to have properties. As you say at the minute, it's, it's infinitesimally thin, it doesn't actually do anything. And the way we need to do that is we need to say, right, well, we've got this, sh we've got this design, but we want it to be thicker. We want it to be, say, three millimeters thick, so it's kind of like a, a sh piece of metal that's been bent and morphed into this shape. And the way you do that is if you go up onto this uh, the add section, it's, it's where sweep is, is located, and you go down to thicken, you can select a body or a, a surface that you've made, and then you say, right, I want to thicken. So now at the minute this is thickened by uh, 6 mil, but we can change that in this here, so we'll change that just to 5 mil, just so you know, no, I have changed it. And then you select if you want to thicken it upwards or downwards. In this case, we're going to choose downwards. So now it's thickened. So now it's like a big sheet of metal that's been thickened, and it looks um, like it's a 
you know, part of the Sydney Opera House or something like that. But you can make some quite intricate shapes like that. You can make some funnels, or you can make, um, like I said, plane wings or helicopter blades, or you can make, you know. Um, I always think of Formula One cars when, when we've got stuff like this. But that's really quite useful. That's, um, that's something that you can do. And then you might say, well, okay, we'll get rid of this thicken for now. That's, that's all well and good, but... But, you know, that doesn't actually do anything important for us. We wanted a square down here that has this as a top. Well, we'll just quickly, just, just to satisfy you, we'll um, get that square going. So we'll parallel plane again. Make the square a little bit lower down. And we'll just put an arbitrary square in here, obviously. In real life, you'd um, have it with its, its proper dimensions and such forth. So we've got our square there. But we want... We don't want a dull face that looks like that. That's, that's boring. We want the face to look like the top of this. I mean, the Sydney Opera House needs a roof, so that's what we're going to do. So we say we want this face, this top flat dull face, to be replaced by this interesting face. And how do we do that? Well, we go back to surfacing. And you can see this little replace face here. So that allows you to select a face that you want to replace. So we're going to select this top face. Yep. And then we want to replace it with what? We want to replace it with this curve. So as you can see, this whole object's extruded up to meet this curve. And now where the face was is now being completely replaced. So if we looked at it from the top, ignoring the contours, it's a perfect square because that's the outline of the shape. But it's when you look at it from these angles that you can see that it's been replaced by this uh, bounded face that we made earlier on. And that's quite useful there. As I said, all of these things will start to... Um, the, the more uh, sort of engineering problems that you, you uh, dive into, the more you'll realise how useful this stuff actually is, because this sort of thing is actually quite useful, as I said, for computational fluid dynamics and stuff like that. But it also just makes designs look a lot more interesting. If you're doing something with ergonomics, you don't want it's just a straight bar or a, like a square bar. You want something that moulds to the hands quite nicely, and that's what that's what the purpose of this stuff is. So the last thing we're going to do, I'm just going to delete all of this here. Say you wanted a tube, like um like a rubber tube. What we're going to do for that is we're just going to draw a circle. Um, we'll, we'll just make it 40 mil in diameter, and then draw a second. Uh, we're going to draw our set. Our set. And obviously, we don't want it in the middle of the circle. We want it on the edge of the circle. Oh, uh, that's fine. Because I'm not like that. You need to select two to the width. Now it's stuck to the edge of that. Now we're going to select our curve again and make like a nice sweeping sort of so that's like going to be our tube. Finish that. And uh, as I said beforehand, um, in the very beginning of the intermediate pack in the first video, we would have used the sweep and we would have allowed the object to sweep along here, but if we wanted a tube, we would want it to be hollow, and it would be very difficult to go along through that and cut it exactly the same way. So what we can do, we can use the tools we've already learnt, we can use the sweep command, but uh, the 2D uh, surface sweep command and surfaces, so it's blue surf, bounded width, which we've looked at, don't need to look at this stuff just yet, but we do need to look at sweep. It works in the same way, where you select your edge that you're going to follow and you select your shape that you're going to curve now oh, that's why bear with me okay we're going to go and sweep single path and cross section this time not multiple path and cross section multiple path and cross section from before i don't know if you remember was um we used um uh, we used the two edges that we we're going to follow and then we used the two areas that we wanted to kind of mesh together but this is a much simpler shape, so we can just say we want a single path, which was that, and then a single cross section, which is our 
circle. And then we get this uh, infinitesimally thin tube. And now, well, the way to make it to an actual tube is quite simply, we're just going to add, thicken, select the body that we want to thicken, thicken it inwards, and now we've got our tube. And that's all we're going to be looking at today, so I'll see you guys in the advanced pack.